Hello, good evening one and all. I am Dr. Asavri Savan, dentist and public health specialist from the UK. And on behalf of Voice of Healthcare, I welcome you to the World Oral Health Day live panel discussion on being mouth proud, promoting oral health for overall health, supported by Sanat Products and Dr. Wilma Shaw of India. So 20th March every year is celebrated as World Oral Health Day. This year's World Oral Health Day theme is to be proud of your mouth. On this day, oral health experts from all around the world unite to help reduce the burden of oral health diseases, which affect not only individuals, but health systems and economies everywhere as well. To contribute to this global campaign to empower people with knowledge, tools and confidence to secure good oral health, Voice of Healthcare has organized this panel discussion with very eminent experts from the field of oral health. Please allow me to welcome Dr. Anmol Agrawal, who is consultant oral and maxillofacial surgeon practicing at Yashoda Super Speciality Hospital, Ghaziabad. Welcome, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Next, I'd like to welcome Dr. Namrata Dalal, DHA qualified consultant endodontist and oral implantologist practicing at Cusp Dental Gurugram. Welcome, ma'am. Next, I welcome Dr. Keerthi Goyal, senior consultant prostodontist at Maharaja Agrasen Hospital, New Delhi. Welcome, ma'am. I also welcome Dr. Vidhi Bhanushali, who is the co-founder and CEO of Dental Dost. Welcome, ma'am. Thank you. So today's panel discussion is strategically aimed at generating public health awareness on the importance of maintaining oral health and hygiene for improving overall health on this World Oral Health Day. So without further ado, let us begin with our first question. My first question is to Dr. Namrita Dalal, ma'am. Please share some of the common oral health awareness approaches that you employ at your practice in Dubai that you have noticed and how majorly a major difference have you observed regarding oral prevention and awareness in Dubai as compared to India? What all have you noticed in your practice and how does that vary and what all can we learn? Yes. So uh, one very important thing that I've noticed here in Dubai in the past one month that I've been around in the clinics, I've given interviews, is that each clinic over here and uh, not only dental clinics, the medical centers are all impaneled with uh, dental insurances and a number of them. So uh, any individual, a walk-in patient uh, does not hesitate in getting a routine dental checkup done. So firstly, very important for prevention. Secondly, I feel the lack of dental insurance in India is a major factor for people not focusing on prevention of oral health and also not taking interceptive treatments. Uh, specifically in rega regards to costlier dental treatments like um, orthodontic treatments, implants, replacement of missing teeth. Uh, if you have dental insurance, you tend to uh, have a leverage in uh, choosing over a better treatment for yourself. So I feel Dubai uh, has that option for the uh, population. Also, there's a floating population in Dubai. So a lot of foreigners, a lot of uh, tourists that come over here and especially, um, so it's, uh, I, I believe that um, dental treatment is cheaper in India. But when you look at the number of options that are available with this, with visits to the orthodontic treatment, to implants, uh, I feel the options over here are more, they're more feasible, they're more affordable, uh, not in terms of the treatment cost, but the way that the affordability is there, that insurance is provided. Even if you go to a normal medical center, for example, I went with my mother, just for a routine general health checkup. We were recommended for oral health checkup. So I feel that has made a lot of difference in the awareness in the population over here, which I feel um, could be worked on in India. That, that is a great point that you shared that uh, we, India should also work towards incorporating more and more dental services in our uh, uh, health policy and, uh, you know, um, um, yes. 
insurance so that more people have the access to those things it's my next question it. yeah my next question is to dr kirti goel ma'am uh, so general overall health improvement uh, for as this is a public health awareness uh, program that we are doing today so what are your top tips for old people for parents of infants and school going children and for pregnant women who are having some dental issues what would be your top general oral health improvement tips for all three categories uh, so that they do not aggravate their existing problems and are more aware about how to uh, tackle these issues when they are clueless yeah right dr savan so a very good question you put up because what we are talking about is the sections of the society which are considered to be most vulnerable the elderly the young and and the pregnant females the most vulnerable uh, if you say socially as well as economically right so uh, for the elderly as you can see in your old homes as well and people around you also so there are lots of elderly people we have who have a very uh, i would say limited access to health care let alone oral health care is of least importance to them due to socio economic factors due to limited uh, uh, social uh, status and economic is related so and more or less uh, the awareness also is less because what happens in india is if there's something wrong with the teeth you get it extracted there's the concept of preserving or conserving is not there you know if anything is wrong go get it extracted but then you don't realize that later on in life when the patient is elderly teeth are much needed for your overall health because when overall health is dependent on your oral health it is the key to your oral health overall health so when your oral health is not good suppose the number of teeth is less lacking the teeth are insufficient or inefficient both inefficient as in maybe the teeth are present but opposing teeth is not there so they are as good as not being present right so in that case also the patient has that uh, that in, uh, indigestion problems are there because they are not able to chew their food properly so this becomes a vicious circle because it leads to malnourishment malnutrition which adds on to other diseases other deficiency related diseases are formed so the whole complex is there so initially uh, i think so it is uh, uh, the stress should be laid so that the elderly also realize that the importance of teeth is there like you know and for the young and children and friends for parents of them uh, for the parents i would like to suggest that uh, you should avoid the late night uh, feeding from the bottles or breast feeding that breast feeding or bottle feeding should not continue after 12 months of age less sugar intake which all of us know nothing much that uh, elaborate on that other than that what i would suggest is in my opinion what studies also evidence says that the mothers who have uh, oral caries or have dental caries they can pass on to that to their children there's a vertical transfer so it is not that the caries the caries inducing bacteria can be transferred from the mother to the child so if the mother's oral health is good she will be taking care of her children as well so this is a whole uh, that's what you say social society is you know if a mother is good that values will be passed on to the children as well and for the pregnant females it is very unfortunate that uh, uh, in india in my opinion in india uh, i think so oral health checkups should be done as a prenatal checkup as well it should be a plan comprehensive prenatal thing because uh, it has been proven that uh, in pregnancy if the patient has periodontitis this can lead to preterm uh, labors or low birth weight babies so but uh, unfortunately uh, most of the medical practitioners also not aware of this and this should be brought to to limelight another very great uh, point that you shared ma'am that prenatal uh, he oral health checkups should also be made uh, and more awareness should be generated around this topic as well so that was amazing thank you so much my next question is to dr anmol agrawal sir sir we uh, during this covid time we heard a lot about mucormycosis and its relation to oral health and that dentists are the first ones that were detecting both covid i believe as well as mucormycosis 
psychosis cases. Yes. So what basic signs people should be knowing about this thing and how is the prevalence of mucormycosis cases are right now, a post pandemic times. So after this pandemic, we've gone through this. So currently what are, what is sort of the prevalence that we are seeing of mucormycosis? What all the patients should be aware of as the clinical signs and symptoms? And what are the treatment protocols are adopted in India that people should be knowing of? Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, Dr. Savan, for putting that question. Uh, I believe uh, in that COVID period, uh, this was one of the biggest fear patient had. Uh, all through the media, there was a news. Uh, we are suffering from black fungus after this, that, you know, deadly virus COVID infection. Uh, mucormycosis, uh, my message to the people is very simple. It's uh, basically an opportunistic fungal infection, which uh, used to happen earlier days also. It's not just limited to COVID patients. Any patient who is uh, immunocompromised, uh, for example, anybody who is uh, on immunocompromised therapy, anybody who has undergone an organ transplant, people already know that uncontrolled diabetic patients uh, to add on patients who are, you know, hospitalized for long term. These uh, categories are, you know, more vulnerable to acquire this sort of uh, infection. And uh, to just knowledge to the patients, what we, they see is whatever looks black is not mucormycosis. When I was uh, practicing in this uh, COVID time, most of the patients were coming to me that my tooth is turning black and Am I suffering from black fungus? No, it is not. Basically, mucormycosis uh, can be classified into various categories. It can affect any part of the body. Majorly, uh, you know, we get to see deadly mucormycosis, which travels to the brain, which we call as a cerebral mucormycosis. It can infiltrate your lungs. Uh, it can go to your cutaneous tissues. But, uh, you know, discussing about more of the maxillofacial region or the oral region, Majorly, the sinuses are the you know harbor for this uh, sort of fungal infection, which can further spread to the uh, surrounding tissues. And uh, patients uh, who had COVID usually uh, they complained of you know uh, during the hospitalization or after getting discharged they started noticing uh, some sort of unexplained swelling on the uh, facial region, basically natural to the nose or in the sinus area, they started complaining of uh, unexplained mobility in the teeth, associated with fever, severe pain, you know, sometimes first discharge also. So, uh, but that again, uh, does not uh, categorize that the patient is suffering from mucormycosis until and unless we prove it histopathologically. I mean to say we test it in the laboratory under the microscope, we do culture sensitivities, so, uh, Anybody who is suspecting a mucormycosis infection or a black fungus infection has to undergo a laboratory test where the consultant, maybe an ENT or maxillofacials who majorly deal with this area, has to take a sample of the tissue and send it to the laboratory for the testing. And once it is proven, then only we start with the therapy of mucormycosis to the patient. So majorly, uh, if I uh, tell you mucormycosis is a sort of infection where your vessels are blocked. So there is kind of tissue infarct and ultimately tissue necrosis. So the tissue becomes dead and ultimately turns out black. So now this fungus can mm, enter the body through inhalation or through cutaneous to uh, inner roots. So it might be there. Uh, uh, you never know what patient is suffering from mucormycosis or not. But once proven, yes, it has to be taken care. Uh, it has to be uh, dealt with like a medical emergency. And uh, as far as the treatment is concerned, uh, uh, although nobody must have seen so many mucormycosis cases at a stretch, uh, I think, I believe, if the survey goes fine, approximately four to 5,000 cases were reported in that period of pandemic. And uh, we surgeons were uh, in the favor of uh, you know, wide sur surgical deprivement, followed by a lot of antifungal therapies, and uh, that too in a high dose, and later on supportive therapies. But most of these patients who underwent uh, the surgical deprivements had a very bad time because uh, they had developed a lot of uh, you know facial deformities. Either the jaw, one part of the jaw is removed, or 
or uh, you know a lot of feet were removed so rehabilitation is another factor which needs to be you know dealt with most of the patients who are surgically operated we can't leave such patients behind we need to rehabilitate them Re rehabilitation again have different uh, you know categories we can choose some patient specific implants and you know restore the form and function of the facial region we can also get them uh, you know uh, rehabilitation regarding the teeth whichever way best possible but yes uh, recurrence is again a question which comes up when we uh, talk about rehabilitation so we need to make sure before we go for the rehabilitation that patient has no chances of further recurrence but as i said if somebody is uncontrolled diabetic then uh, it's not just covid which can cause uh, mucormycosis mucormycosis can also be present uh, during normal days so we need to be very careful uh, don't panic uh, we not to panic until there's proven uh, laboratorily that you are suffering from mucormycosis and yes treatment is very much available we can treat these patients very well uh, only uh, point is uh, it should be treated well in time if you delay then yes it can even be fatal thank you so much for sh sharing that sir that was super informative so our key takeaway would be so that if you are immunocompromised in any way get the professionally checked and tested uh, as soon as possible so as to avoid any further damage to uh, people yourself and people around you uh my next question would be to dr vidhi bhanushali ma'am what is smart dental care could you please explain us a uh, uh, smart dental care and how has covid played a role in delivering artificial intelligence based smart dental care thank you for that question uh, dr asavari i feel very glad to be here on the panel on the discussion of be mouth proud and that's something that we have been trying to force or you know imbibe in the people's head so that they care, they take oral care as seriously as their overall care now coming to your question about what is smart oral care and what is artificial intelligence powered uh, oral care all the problems which were mentioned by dr namrata dr kirti and dr anmol of uh, right from dental insurance problem to lack of awareness in all this uh, age category whether it's geriatric uh, space or pediatric and pregnant women to also people not being able to assess mucormycosis in time because again lack of awareness and where do they go uh, surprising fact here india has more number of dentists than required by who ratio yet our oral health system was overwhelmed during uh, pandemic and uh, people are not keen on visiting dental surgeons for preventive or just for normal checkup as dr namrata mentioned what we are seeing in india as dental surgeons what we thought uh, so if we can give this level of diagnosis which is at least the preventive level the first level of diagnosis uh, a, a, a differential diagnosis followed by a treatment plan and the prognosis of the same by highlighting the consequences if people do not take care at right at that stage right not just financial wise but even pain uh, time and effort wise it's all uh it's going to increase by certain x times why can't we deliver doctors at people's house so through dental dost what we have been doing is making people's smartphone as their mini dentist now a very surprising fact one more that uh, indians have more number of indians have smartphone compared to toothbrush so if uh, more than 60 crore people are connected to internet via smartphone they can easily access and download something on the platform which will help them scan so by smart tele dentistry i mean a feature which can enable any person or any random person who's not from dental or medical domain to assess his oral cavity whether it's through oral scan oral video or by connecting to a doctor and speaking to him about whatever diagnosis which is uh, enlisted so what we have been doing at dental dose is uh, just through your smartphone camera you take photos of your mouth or videos as assessed in the guidelines and you get an immediate report within 5 seconds no matter where you are or what you are doing so we have trained machine which is known as machine learning which is again booming to think like a dentist so we have trained more than 1 lakh images to assess 
heart tissues and soft tissues diseases as of now we have deployed heart tissues which are 32 in number we have which we have enlisted right from stains calculus malaligned fractured missing tooth diastema everything so when a person is scanning he's understanding these terms and when he once he understand these terms and read about the consequences of not getting a pit and fissure filled in time in order to prevent a root canal he it automatically that there's a seed in his head which he'll be thinking right if i pay for example around somewhere between 1500 to 2000 rupees for filling my pit and fissure caries i can save 10000 rupees for a root canal treatment if i get root canal treatment in die time by just spending 10000 rupees i can save extraction and implant which would cost around 50000 in future so that's what we are doing second thing that we are working on ensuring uh, healthy teeth so in order to have insurance for your teeth they must be healthy or at some par is what we are working so there are multiple parameters that we are adding but this has already been deployed and i feel so glad that last year we were able to serve more than 30000 patients pan india and also we've got inquiries uh, from outside india plus uh, dr anmol i would i feel so glad to uh, mention one more point that throughout the country we scan more than 5000 patients for mucormycosis and 32 were detected positive out of which eight were severe and we were able to uh, give them a bed instantly like this they diagnosed they were able to connect to our in-house dentist we spoke to them give them consultation uh, and counseling do not uh, worry we have all the uh, treatments in place we gave them bad we also checked their transportation because these were from villages where there were no facilities uh, like dental hospitals and availability of oral surgeons and all so we got them to Pune and got their surgery in time and we were able to save them. So that's this is just the beginning, I feel. Uh, plus, to uh, end my note here, COVID played a big role. If we see all the industry, many were hampered, but many were also blessed during uh, the two years of lockdown. And not to mention, right, there was 1000% growth in telehealth and telemedicine. So it was a it was like a boom to us where people were scanning their oral cavity and were connected to doctors all the time. So it played a very major role, not just in changing uh, B2C or end consumer perspective towards telehealth, but uh, gladly even doctors. Initially, doctors, especially dentists, were very skeptical in delivering tele-dentistry because for other uh, fields like medicine, the end consumer or patient is able to describe, I have a headache, it's hurting here, or you know, I have cold. But when it comes to oral care, it's very difficult to describe because the person itself, he, he doesn't know if gums is hurt, gums are hurting, teeth is hurting, if it's a referral pain, or so on and so forth. But now, through all these advancements in technology and acceptance of patients of receiving telehealth, even doctors have become uh, more uh, accepting in order to give this kind of a telehealth. So that's all from my side. Thank you so much, Dr. Vidhi. That was very uh, unique and uh, informative work that you are doing in the field of uh, dentistry and dentistry for the future as well, I believe. So move, we'll come back to you again. I have a few more queries that I would like to clear, but we'll move to Dr. Anmol Agrawal now. Sir, uh, we have uh, seen that treatment options such as implants and basal implants are very popularly advised these days for many uh, cases, as these are more newer uh, treatment options in dentistry as compared to other such as prosthodontics and fixed uh, dentures and those things so for our viewers please could you explain in you know uh, easy language that in which patients implants and dental advance would implants would work the best and are advised and in which particular cases implants should not be the mode of treatment uh, yeah uh, that's a very good question and uh, as the other panelists have already mentioned that missing teeth uh, itself is a you know, sign of bad oral health. Uh, I call it as nothing but a disability. Because if the patient is having missing teeth and not able to chew food, uh, our nutrition is not good, and there are so many other factors. So uh, as far as uh, the replacement of missing teeth is concerned, so earlier days we all know that dentures used to be the 
treatment of choice and then followed by bridges as a layman term. Uh, but as far as uh, the recent time is concerned, most of the people are more aware and more uh, thinking in terms of fixed sort of replacement. That I need not to be you know, taking out and eating everything. So people are foodie these days. A lot of restaurant business is going on. So. Uh, they want to eat. They want to eat and enjoy food, and that is what uh, is the major role of teeth. Uh, replacing uh, teeth again with implants. Yes, uh, implants we consider as uh, next to natural replacements. And uh, with whatever type of implants, and chairs, which is placed inside your bone, or the basal implants which are placed, uh, you know, above the alveolar bone. So basically, the idea is uh, to give support for a new artificial teeth and which is more you know load bearing so patient and sustainable okay so uh, for the patients to understand uh, as uh, we discussed most of the patients ignore so if they lose beauty they ignore so whatever part of the body is not used that's the nature's law that will shrink off we call it as atrophy of disease so once the bone shrink off the oral bone we call it as alveolar bone then again, we need to search uh, bone to replace, you know, to place implants. So implant is uh, a type of replacement which is taking support from the bone, the alveolar bone of the jaw. And whatever, if basal implant is an option, then basal bone of the jaw, whatever part. So until unless the bone is available, we can't place an implant sufficiently. So patients, uh, as far as I feel, uh, there is no absolute contraindication. I would say uh, many of the patients can go for implant. These days we do implants for cancer patients also, where we do uh, you know jaw resection followed by we do fibula graft and we already place implants into it and then we can put it back to the patient's body. So uh, implant, I don't feel there is any uh, absolute contraindication, but there are relative contraindications. Uh, I mean to say patients who can't maintain implants, whatever is the reason, whether they are uh, whether they are eating habits whether it's the systemic condition like for example we were talking about uncontrolled diabetics so uncontrolled diabetics yes are considered vulnerable to have an implant being infected or their bone density is not good osteoporotic patients females uh, who are 50 plus and not every female is getting osteoporosis after 50 but patients uh, who have osteoporosis so their bone is considered weak there might be a contraindication so we need to assess so uh, when I was taught implants, I was very clear that it's the case selection, it's the site selection. Maybe one patient at different sites in the mouth might not be eligible for implant. One site we can do very good implant, and one site we need to choose from some other option. So it's always mix and match sometimes. But uh, as far as other implant technologies are concerned, like we have zygomatic implants, we have pterygoid implants, we have uh, you know evolved too much. And we can uh, go to any extent in uh, giving implants. Patients for whose jaw, jaw bone is dissolved or uh, you know too much uh, uh, bone is very thin or something, and the vital organs are nearby, we can even graft the bone from their own body. So we can take uh, autogenous graft. So from their own body, we can take graft and you know graft it inside the jaw, and later date we can put implants. So again, the patient's interest: who wants what? So case selection is the most important criteria, and uh, I feel, as I said, uh, implants are next to natural. The most important point here, what I want to raise is proprioception. So now proprioception is what? Uh, for a layman uh, person to understand, if you are chewing food and a stone comes uh, between your teeth, you can sense it. So that is how our teeth are connected to our brain in layman terms. Other prosthetic options like dentures, or FPTs, sometimes this proprioception is lacking. So implants has got that proprioception. Second is taste. So with dentures, most of the patient complains of uh, lack of taste. FPTs uh, also sometimes proprioception issues there, and they are not lifelong. So uh, as we are discussing, that patients are already ignorant. Now, if we give them once uh, a processes and that is not everlasting. Then maybe the patient might not turn back and say, I'm fed up with this, I'm not going again to get into this. So, uh, we should always think of a long term uh, solution. So implants are one of such uh, long term solutions. Uh, so, uh, as far as the patient is concerned, patients should understand that uh, it is one of the options. And if they can afford, yes, because 
implants are still expensive they are uh, time taking jobs we although immediate implants are there but sometimes we can't do immediate implants for all the patients so patient a layman uh, will come down and say that okay i want two three players can you do it in a day you know sometimes it is not possible uh, so we should follow by the protocols uh, to get uh, long term results yeah and as uh, miss uh, uh, dr namrita uh, clearly explained to us that uh, uh, more and more such treatment should be included at uh, at dental and health insurances for the country so that we can uh, have more newer and more advanced and more uh, sophisticated treatments made accessible to people all around india so yeah, my I, next... i just want to add one point if possible uh, these days insurance companies in india have understood uh, the concept of functional deformity so if uh, we are opting for implant we can always raise a, a gpa query to the insurer that this patient has got a trauma or lost feel due to trauma and there's a functional deformity and for that particular reason we are putting implants so many of the insurance companies are ready to uh, accept it and ready to you know uh, permit some amount of the funds which are required to replace implants so functional deformity should be the uh, criteria not the cosmetics okay another great thing thank you for sharing sir uh, so my next question would be to dr keerti goel ma'am uh, how important in your practice have you observed the role of early detection and early screening not just for simple oral diseases but also diseases such as uh, oral cancer and you know major deformities all around oral health and overall health and in your experience what more is needed for building more awareness in people in india regarding the same yeah uh, in my practice i have come across patients uh, i have in my self diagnosed cases uh, where patient was unaware of a uh, pre cancel they had pre cancerous lesions they were and they just come for regular dental checkup their pre cancerous lesions were there like like in planus or uh, this oral submucous fibrotic bands were there so patient was completely unaware there was just like limited mouth opening is there this burning sensation i was not able to tolerate spices and dry, some patients complained of dry mouth so uh, once you then see the cases and you evaluate those cases then you realize what is the, the there's lot of unawareness and there's lack of awareness among people uh, about these pre cancerous conditions like pre cancerous conditions uh, people just think okay fine oral cancer can be just because of tobacco chewing but it is not related to just tobacco chewing tobacco chewing is just one of the major predisposing factors for oral cancer but not the only factor even if patients who are not taking tobacco they also suffer from oral cancer it is not that they don't suffer from oral cancer it is just that when you are taking tobacco the chances of oral cancer are high so uh, i have seen patients females who have oral submucous fibrosis who have lichen planus and right they have some white patches some red patches some oral ulcers are there which do not heal so and when you send them for diagnosis they come up with something or the other like some pre cancerous lesions are there so uh, in my opinion the screening early screening is very important because as we know all know that oral cancer for that matter any cancer if diagnosed at early stage the treatment and the outcomes are much better the survival rates are much higher as compared to if you diagnose it at a later stage so screening at the early stage is very very important and uh, all of us just talk about uh, uh, tobacco but for most of us what we uh, forget is alcohol consumption what we see on tobacco packs we see there's a warning sign there warning photograph is there don't consume tobacco you'll get mouth cancer nodal cancers and everything but what about alcohol alcohol is equally the culprit but there are no warning signs as such on alcohol bottles or in my opinion that should, that warning sign should be there on alcohol as well because alcohol is also one of the major factors for oral cancer and when you say for investigations uh some investigations like when you get an opg done some if you uh some suspect something get an opg done sometimes you come across an opg is a normal patient has come for an extraction it took normal tooth extraction but when you get an opg done what you see you see a huge mandible is all uh, rotten away or eaten away or there's some huge ulceration is there in the palate you just get an opg done none of the whole the maxilla is not there so the early screening is very important for diagnosis 
and treatment of oral cancer because the survival rate and the outcome will depend on early screening and diagnosis. I completely agree with you, ma'am. I also read somewhere that people completely ignore the fact that even betel nut chewing also leads to oral cancer and those sort of lesions. And that betel nut chewing is also very culturally associated with many countries in Southeast Asia. And we can see many a uh, good number of cases with oral cancer in such countries because of the same. So uh, unfortunately, I would add yeah. to this. Unfortunately. Unfortunately, most of the patients belong to low social economic strata. They are not even aware of what is happening in them yeah. and they don't have that kind of uh, economics or this to deal with this kind of cancer treatments. And uh, even if they create this awareness through mass media, you make those pamphlets or those mass media is there. These people are illiterate. They don't know. They cannot read what is going like. So you have to reach out to the masses to convey to them. This is uh, the oral awareness, cancer awareness is to be done at the grassroots levels to the primary health care workers, to the Anganwadis, maybe uh, or to the, at the grassroots level in the urban, in, urban areas are okay, but rural areas we are lacking in. Definitely, ma'am. I completely agree that oral health awareness at the grassroots level is something that we need to really work on in India. Not just uh, general health awareness, but specializing and focusing on oral health awareness at the lower and grassroots levels as well. So uh, moving on to the next question is to Dr. Namrita Dalal, ma'am. Ma'am, what are the newer and more advanced treatment options and modalities that you have commonly observed for class one, class two, and these common caries and common, um, you know, uh, cases that uh, are caries reaching up to pulp? I have, uh, in my uh, uh, experience in our colleges in India, I, although amalgam is not, uh, you know, recommended, but we still had. Uh, many exams that were conducted with amalgam fillings and that. So leaving that aside, what are the newer, better treatment options for common uh, caries, class one and class two, and those reaching up to the pulp? So yes, Dr. Aspari, um, amalgam already is considered below the standard of care in most of the countries, and even in some places in India also. So amalgam is, uh, there were so many wars on amalgam, first war, second war, that we used to read in study one. So we've come a long way from actually preparing the tooth to receive the restoration and focusing on um, saving as much of the tooth as possible. So we have a completely new uh, focus area of interest in dentistry, which is called minimally invasive dentistry. So uh, in minimally invasive dentistry, so we've uh, learned from science, from these materials that we've tested for fracture, strength, regeneration, and all these things, that nothing can replace what is God-given, what is natural. So even if we uh, replace a tooth with an implant, which is the best I feel uh, possible, the closest uh, to a natural feel that Dr. Anmol has said, but it is not your natural tooth. And even in pediatrics, if you do see, uh, the best space maintainer is your natural tooth. So we're focusing more on preserving uh, what we already have. So in that aspect, we have uh, newer inventions. There is something called as a smart burr. So the smart burr uh, is a self-limiting burr, which only cuts the carious dentine. So the, there are uh, caries detecting dyes also. And even when we speak with uh, respect to endodontics, the traditional access cavity itself used to be huge for our convenience so that we have a straight line access is slowly and slowly turning into a truss access, which is focused only in minimally accessing the canals and preserving as much marginal tooth structure as possible. So we have studies and we clearly know now the more tooth structure, the marginal ridge, the more structure itself of the tooth that we save, the stronger and the more long lasting it is. Particularly with respect to materials, if you ask me, we've had a uh, materials like MTA, biodentine, which have been game changers. So when we have um, caries which are approaching the pulp or very near, and when you uh, unfortunately have a pulp exposure and you're uh, suddenly really scared uh, during the operatory, we have something on hand which is uh, self-regenerating and repairing uh, in such a short span of time. So we have a higher chance of preserving your tooth and completely avoiding root canals and crowns and so many appointments to the patients. And uh, unfortunately, root canal sittings uh, cannot be done in one sitting also sometimes. And then we lose the patient and the patient never comes back for the crown. 
So I feel it's very important for us to um, upgrade ourselves with the latest technology and try and save what we already have. And uh, secondly, um, also with respect to root canal, the trend today uh, has been on regeneration. So if we have an immature uh, tooth coming to us, the first and the foremost thing that our books have taught us is to try and save that tooth and try and regenerate the pulp. If that fails, fine. We can always go ahead with the root canal. But if we are able to successfully regenerate the pulp, we are giving a new life to the tooth altogether. So we are regenerating that tooth and saving so I feel uh, materially and with respect to approach also, there has been a vast change uh, that is there. And it is very important for us to keep um, uh, ourselves abreast with the current research and trends because uh, what if I keep practicing amalgam in my uh, practice and I, I just don't know that these materials have come out, right? So the onus lies on us. And there, uh, for the patients, there are so many accessible options these days. And the dentists uh, who are up to date with these things usually do not jump and suggest things like, okay, if it's closer to your pulp, probably I'll jump. It's a deep class to I'll jump into a root canal. Or, uh, okay, this tooth looks uh, hopeless. I will not try post and core and I'll just straight ahead go and extract it. So, um, and also with respect to, because we've been discussing dental implants and dental implants are a trend in Dubai these days. All right. So, but um, we have come towards dental implants and slowly and slowly I feel even uh, fixed partial dentures are moving away. So the first and foremost uh, thing that I tell my patients why we prefer dental implants, even though they are costlier, is because we are not touching your tooth that is uh, already next to the uh, tooth that needs to be replaced. And it's an extensive treatment that we're going through. We're, doing, we're going to a root canal, we're giving a, a three unit bridge and uh, the onus of maintaining that bridge is on you. So if you fail on doing that, then you're losing those two teeth too, right? To caries and periodontal disease. So minimally invasive dentistry, I feel, is the way forward from here on. Thank you so much for sharing that, ma'am. Definitely minimal um, uh, dentists all around the world are working towards saving as much of your tooth and your oral structures as possible. And as dentistry is so vast and so wide and so ever evolving, we have new materials and new techniques and new approaches coming on almost every time. So keeping us and also the patients updated on the latest and the more advanced techniques is also very important that dentists are qualified and they know what latest techniques are there but many a times people uh, patients do not know what they have to go for or what all options that can they go for for better protecting their tooth so informing patients side by side is also a very important thing that we need to work towards so coming on back to you dr vidhi uh, please could you explain us to us how our organizations such as dental those reaching out to people especially pay patients who are you know in the tier two tier three and further cities who do not have access to uh, dental specialist and oral specialist as readily so how uh, is uh, you know dental those working towards reaching that population and also how are you guys uh, generating awareness in this uh, field of dentistry and your work around that thank you for that question dr asavri so as I had mentioned earlier, right, more number of Indians have access to internet, smartphones than having access to toothbrush and uh, awareness on oral health care. We are just jumping on what people have access to. And through that medium, we are trying to reach this crowd. Now, if we see oral problems in India, it's they are present in both the uh, geographies, urban also and rural too. Although we have more number of doctors available, dentists available, yet people in urban India even if they are aware, I think they are not guided in the right manner. Uh, even the most educated and elite class of people that we may find in uh, tier one cities may know dentist as a dental surgeon only or a few specialities like oral and maxillofacial surgery or implantologist. But they are not aware of all the nine branches of dentistry and how important it is to get connected to the right dentist at the right time, which we are doing. And second, coming to rural India, obviously, the problem starts from awareness they don't want to think about oral care because the existing problems that they have in life are much bigger and grave as compared to think about my tooth is aching right better extract and get done with it i have 32 teeth is what they think 
to address this what we thought first we need to make them think about why oral care is important and why they need to think about it in the first place so first uh, starts by getting access to them at their uh, household which is through the internet which they already have second by using the generic language now india has 16 uh, languages right which are officially announced and there are multiple more languages which is been spoken all around india if we get to these people in their native generic language they would give us a year to at least hear about what's happening and why we want to make them aware about oral health care third i think we can instill all this preventive health care by rewarding these behaviors in a positive reinforcement manner now for example if you brush regularly in the right manner in the morning and evening you will be rewarded by these things whether it's coupons or uh, points which they can use uh, to redeem on their treatments if it is required or just to buy some oral products consumables like toothbrush and toothpaste are anyways bought right and these are also bought by uh, checking what are the deals available and let's buy a family pack you know we know that not just everyone should have a different toothbrush but also toothpaste according to their oral type and since your toothpaste is getting rubbed to bristles there are high chances of cross infection between uh, family members but we still see only one toothpaste in every indian household similarly oral health care is not just limited to brushing with the right technique but oil pulling flossing mouth rinsing which is not even heard of oil pulling and flossing right so making a curated package of not just the treatment that you require in dental clinic but your daily habits just like what uh, wellness centers in the gym say right it's not what one hour you are doing in the gym but 23 hours that you are following in your diet similarly no matter how much treatments you know high and treatments like implants or even basic like scaling and filling we give it's the routine care what a person is following from their home which matters the lot in their overall care so making packages for every age group for uh, comorbidities if there are and physiologic conditions like pregnancy that they should be following nighttime brushing morning brushing oil pulling flossing and give them some rewards which would encourage them to do it and obviously reminders in such a way which is not too pushy but easy to access and accept and eventually follow so uh, and uh, not just mentioning all these things we've actually seen these changes now when it comes to shifting the par paradigm altogether from a prescriptive dentistry to preventive dentistry the gestation period is very long because there's no instant gratification that we are giving to patients but by adding these small small milestones or reward points we've actually seen the behavioral changes happening uh, you know, uh, people come in and say that, you know, after following 21 days of the package that we got from the app or, you know, whatever platform, we have now instilled nighttime brushing regularly because of us, our children are watching us and following it, right? So it's like the entire family is changing to the preventive uh, mindset. While drinking any acidic beverages, they have started using straw because now they know it directly affects their teeth. So all the success stories are so good to hear that slowly and steadily with almost we have 75% prevalence rate, which is greater than all the diseases which are present in India. Slowly and steadily, I think we can cover uh, our population of 140 crore people. And this is only possible if we are reaching them in a smart manner and not have a geographical barrier or language barrier. So smart delete industry for me, uh, in a nutshell, is just reaching out to every person rather than dragging them to clinic, instilling this behavior, diagnosing cancers, all the diseases in time so that we can give a good uh, survival rate and a good quality of life later. And uh, I, I think together with these activities, we all can uh, make slowly and steadily world rid of oral diseases or at least the grave diseases. And to end, uh, to end my thing by, by one line, Still, oral cancer uh, is such a grave thing in India. We are oral cancer capital, right? Uh, Nagpur, Maharashtra is the oral cancer capital of the world. 
so through these things uh, we can change people's behavior their habits and er er eradicate this disease one person at a time thank you that was so nicely explained ma'am thank you so much and definitely you pointed out a great thing that uh, the focus of all the health experts now should not just be treatment of the existing disease related to oral health but also instilling this uh, habit of preventing any future diseases and india also needs to focus towards prevention of uh, any future oral health and not just the treatment focus models that we have currently so definitely uh, so uh, as we have just 10 minutes remaining i would like to have this last uh, end note from all our panelists on what do you understand by being mouth proud and what would your one advice or recommendation be to our viewers to improve their oral and overall health i know this is a very general uh, statement and you cannot improve your oral health in just one tip uh, but again just as a reminder for them to keep in their minds if they cannot do anything at all this one thing what would be your recommendation uh, let's start from dr agrawal sir uh yeah saban that's a very good uh, must be a very good closing note uh, i would just uh, would tell the viewers that do not underestimate the oral health oral health is not just about your teeth it's about many other things uh, most of the people understand that we just chew food and eat food and that is all related to the oral health but oral health also plays crucial role in your personality in your uh, self confidence how you talk how you smile and uh, to add on to the recent how you walk because oral health can contribute to your posture as well uh, although that's a very huge topic to discuss on but yes do not underestimate your oral health remember that a missing tooth is a disability it's not a compensation okay and be uh, preventive not reparative so what we are in the habit of repairing and not conserving that is what i would like to conclude on to the viewers thank you so much sir yeah so uh, next on to you uh, dr namrata ma'am uh, what do you would your tip uh, one advice recommendation to our viewers be on improving uh, oral health and what do you understand on being mouth proud and how what would your one recommendation be so i'm going to tell you the most common thing that all of my patients before i um, send them off is that see me again after 6 months just come and see me once so preventive uh, just a general check up uh, is going to reveal so many things to you and if you're preventive every 6 months you come if you require a scaling you get it done in time there are so many things so that you can avoid just by a simple scaling procedure which is uh, very very inexpensive right so i think if there's a take away message from here is that please trust your dentist put it on your calendar put it in your phone and visit your dentist every 6 months if you have a child please make it a habit for them to visit the dentist and have regular dental checkups please tell your friends and families about this because the consequences i think um covid has made us uh, realize are drastic uh we've seen the effect of mucormycosis like dr anmol has said it's life altering and i feel the people who've undergone these massive surgical debridements and have obturators made they cannot get that life back so we only wish that um, probably if uh, something can be caught very early can be treated very conservatively as everybody else has said let's not make a root canal into a root canal let's just stop it at the filling um, or probably just at plaque control so the last message i will say i'd say is um, be proud of your mouth and visit your dentist every 6 months thank you so much ma'am that was amazing same question to you dr kirti goel ma'am what would your one advice or recommendation be to all the viewers watching and people for improving their oral and overall health so as we all say that mouth is a mirror of your body so if your mouth is healthy and your entire, it shows your entire body is healthy so this in my opinion that has been mouth proud you know so and as dr anmol rightly pointed out 
your oral health is not related to just your physical health but to your mental health as well it builds up your confidence your uh, smile is the most attractive thing which a person notices when the person meets you right and second thing this pandemic which has uh, taught us has been a great teacher to all of us it has made us all realize that health is a new rich your wealth will not be there even if you need it like so health is a new rich invest in it when you're spending on your oral health it is not spending or investing in your oral health you're investing in your future that is my take away definitely ma'am that was some golden golden advice over there that healthy is the new rich and personally i am also believing and uh, following this notion from this year as well so yeah uh, last but not the least dr vidhi bhanushali ma'am what would your one advice to all our viewers be on this world oral health day for improving their oral and overall health and being mouth proud i think majority of the points are already covered but i personally feel you are truly mouth proud when you can the smile wide or show every tooth without being conscious or embarrassed to highlight one example here right we every day uh, after getting ready we would check our hair our skin our nails you know, every day and we show off right people we we like to show off our hair it's a good hair day it's a good skin day but we would never look inside the mouth after brushing every day no one does that people brush uh, standing in front of a mirror but after it's done they won't check if my you know all the teeth are doing good you know cavity has been initiated my tongue has been cleaned good my gums look okay you know they're not bleeding so look inside your mouth every day once you are brushing and the daily routine has been done and to enable that we are already doing that by making them scan so as namrata ma'am rightly said it right see you after 6 months which has to be done but if we uh, you know uh, the situation in india at least scan your teeth every 15 days and look inside your mouth every once in a day that can be a good starter point and you should be so proud because you know your teeth gum your tongue is in such a good uh, healthy state that you should not be ashamed of sharing your mouth photos on a social media like that, like the way you share your skin hair and your selfies right that's when you are truly mouth proud because you know everything's good and fine inside we done this survey and uh, just 30% of people shared their mouth photos right yeah front upper and lower angle who were truly proud of their mouth others were very embarrassed because they know there's a grossly decayed tooth sitting right there there's a missing tooth which needs a replacement so just look inside your mouth follow a good routine get inside the preventive side of uh, healthcare and everything will be right uh, in the place thank you thank you so much ma'am that was amazing we had such an amazing and informative session today and i hope all our viewers watching would also benefit from this shared knowledge greatly all the uh, including our uh, panelists as well as all the dentists around india and the world have this one notion to make people proud of their mouth on this world oral health day and not just of their mouth but also the efforts that they are taking in uh, improving their oral and overall health so with that let us end this session i like to thank all our panelists for being with us and taking out your valuable time for sharing all this information and content with us today i also thank all our viewers and our partners for joining us for this session with that uh, i'll just sign off now with stay happy stay healthy stay mouth proud thank you so much <laughs>